With the views properly oriented and aligned, I can now create 3D geometry from the 2D line work. Now, this part is actually a really good example to use here, because it will allow us to use not only the basic options in creating features, but also some others that you may find useful on your own parts. Keep in mind that many of the features we'll go over here are covered much more thoroughly later in the course, and in more advanced Solid Professor courses. To create the geometry, we'll be using various contours on these sketches to create some simple extrudes and cuts. The first step is deciding which contour will let you capture the most geometry, or which contour will make it easiest. In this case, I want to use the entire outer perimeter of the front view to create our first extrusion. As a side note, I could use the outer perimeter in the top view and extrude it down, but then I would be left with sharp corners, which would require a separate cut feature to round them off, as the front view indicates. The rule of thumb I use is to try and create most of the geometry in as few features as I can. To select the outer contour of the front view, I can hold down the control key and select each of the segments. If you like shortcuts, as I do, you can also just right-click on one of the segments and use the Select Chain command. With the profile selected, I'll use the Extrude feature from the 2D to 3D toolbar. When I do, the Extrude Property Manager will appear. This will be covered much more later, but this window basically allows you to enter the depth that the geometry will be extruded, and the direction it should be extruded from our sketch. Notice there's a flip direction button that lets you control what side the material will be added. I can also use the arrow in the graphics area as a drag handle to move it from one side to the other. If you know the depth, you can use the ruler in the graphics area or type a value into the property manager. Rather than typing in a value here, notice that the depth of this extrusion is captured in both the top and left views. So instead of using a dimension, I can simply click the appropriate point in the top or left view that defines the depth of the extrusion. The end condition of the extrude feature has automatically changed to up to vertex, and the preview looks correct. I'll click OK to complete the first 3D feature. Next, I'll create the two holes that you can see in the front view. I'll select both of them by holding down the control key and use the cut extrude feature on the 2D to 3D toolbar. When the Cut Property Manager appears, you can see it almost has the same options as we saw a minute ago for the Extrude feature. I can type in a distance for the cut, use a vertex to define the depth of the cut, or I can use the drop-down menu to use an end condition called Through All that will cut through all of the material no matter how thick it is. I'll click OK, and the holes are cut. The next step is to use the profile from the top view to cut away the excess material. I'll again use the Select Chain command by right-clicking on one of the segments. To select the remaining segments, I'll hold down the Control key and select them manually. With the profile selected, I'll use the Cut Extrude feature. When the Property Manager appears, I'll go ahead and select the Through All End condition from the drop-down list to make sure the cut goes through the entire part. Notice the Cut feature is trying to remove any material inside of the contour as we selected. Instead, we actually want to cut away all of the material outside of the contour we selected. To do this, I can use the Flip Side to Cut option in the Property Manager. When the preview looks correct, I'll hit the green check. The final feature we need to add here is the small support rib that you can see in the top view and in the left view. Notice you can see the profile of the rib in the top view, and the thickness of the rib is shown in the left view. I'll select the profile from the top view by holding down the control key and selecting each segment, and click Extrude. Notice that, by default, SolidWorks always tries to extrude material from the sketch profile you're working from. In this case, we actually want the rib to start from a point shown in the left view. And this can be easily accomplished by using the From drop-down in the Property Manager, and instead of extruding material from the sketch plane, as you see here, I'll tell SolidWorks to extrude it from a vertex and select the appropriate vertex on the left view. To give the rib the correct thickness, I can type in the value, but instead I'll set the end condition of the extrude to up to vertex, and I'll pick the corresponding point in the left view. The preview now looks correct, so I'll click OK to complete the 3D model. As you can see, all of the information we needed to create this part came directly from our imported DXF or DWG line work. 